Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. Having said that, let me move on to this issue of, uh, of the PF. Now, on this issue, I really wish I was standing and, you know, talk like I'm in class. Even use the help of a, of a diagram to explain. But I'll, I don't have, uh, you know, that luxury of uh, standing, you know, before a whiteboard and whatever, whatever. I wish I had all that facility, but I, I don't have it. So I will try to uh, deliberate to explain you know, in the best way possible, that in the best way possible that I can, you know, sitting here. Now, anarchy is anarchy. Lawlessness is lawlessness. What is wrong is wrong. What is wrong is wrong. So we can have different ways of looking at things, especially in politics. You see, the funny thing about politics is that it just depends on which side you are. The bad thing about politics, the unfortunate part about politics is that we look at things depending on where you are. If you are on the opposition, you can see everything done by the ruling party in the negative. And you can argue as such. You can even convince many people that, look, this is wrong. But just because you are on the opposite side, if you are on the ruling side, you can pick a similar issue, a same issue, and defend it to say, no, this is actually right, when something is actually wrong, and convince so many people that it is actually right. This is a, the challenge about politics. And some of us, you know, when I'm doing politics myself, I'm not doing politics right now, and I'm not going to do politics here. I'm not going to do politics. But I can tell you, if I'm doing politics, if I'm doing politics, <laughs> whichever, whenever there is an issue in the country, I look at it, and I, and I, I look at it from, from a political point of view. I look at it from the point, political point of view to say, if I want to defend the government, what would I say? I see, oh, I could say this, I could say this, and I know I could convince people. If I want to be on the opposition side, what would I say? I know I could say this, I could say this, and I could convince people. I, I see these issues, and many times I look at, I look from both sides, I'm like, okay, if I choose to be on the, on the, on the ruling, part, ruling party side, what would I say? I, I even, you know, where I'm sitting, I'm like, oh, I would say this, I would say this, I would say this. If I'm on the opposition side, oh, I would say this and whatever, whatever, whatever. That is politics. That is politics. Politics is all about debating. From we, you, you can argue from you can argue any issue, any issue, even a murder issue, a murder issue where one picks a gun, shoots, boom, shoots another person. A person is dead, and you can you can argue it from 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 the opposition side. If the person that he has shot is opposition. You can argue it. No, he was trying to, it was self-defense. He was going to be attacked. So he had to take out a gun. You see? Because the person that has committed that, that crime is opposition. So you will come up with all these justification. No, he was threatened. So he had to come up. Hey, whatever. No, the gun just shot. Hey, you can defend it. But if you are on the ruling side, if you are on the ruling side, you can also come up. You can also come up. It, whichever side you are, 
before any issue, depending on which side you are, you can argue it. But I'm not doing that tonight. I'm not doing that. I'm not arguing in favor of the UPND. I'm not arguing in favor of the PF because, I mean, let's face it, we have so many political parties, but the major ones are these two. You know, when you talk about the opposition, you're talking about the PF. When you talk about, you know, the ruling, you're talking about UPND. So, but generally, I mean, the opposition or the ruling party, I want to give you things as they happened. And to start with, I will tell you that whatever is happening to PF, there is lawlessness. Whatever is happening in PF, there is lawlessness. There is lawlessness. Whatever is going on, all this confusion that is going on, all these confusions that is going on, that are going on, they are mad in confusion. In confusion, in lawlessness. In lawlessness. But when we say that, then we are asking, who is, who is not following the law? Who is not following the law? Particularly in this case, if we want, we can say, who is not following the law? We can pick, you know, the, the main characters in this instance. Tonight, I want to pick the main characters. That is Mao Sampa, uh, Edgar Lungu, Nelly Muti, Red Strau Societies. These are the four characters that I want to discuss tonight. There is lawlessness. And in discussing this lawlessness, in discussing this lawlessness, in discussing this lawlessness, I have picked up these four characters. I've picked on Mao Sampa, Edgar Lungu, and in this case, I'm talking about Edgar Lungu as a group, and Mao Sampa as a group. And then I'm picking up Vaneli Muti as a speaker. And then I bring in the registrar of societies because, I mean, there's something that has happened there today. So I want to discuss that. Now, let me start this story of where did it start from? Where did it start from? This issue, if we really look at it, you know, if we really look at it, um, even what we have been hearing, when you ask Mao Sampa, Mao Sampa will tell you that this story starts as far back as, you know, 20, 20, 2015. You remember 2015 when Edgar Lungu was elected as president and Mao Sampa, uh, you know, could not participate? You remember that issue? There was that division when Sata died. So when you ask Mao Sampa, Mao Sampa would take you as, as, as far back as then. And Mao Sampa, he says, look, at that point, Edgar Lungu did not become president following the law. Okay? That is what Mao Sampa is saying. He didn't follow the law. Okay? He didn't follow the law. So, even me, I've got a right to do what, what I've done. They did what they did. They had their cake back then in 2015. They nyunyad me. They crooked me. They sidelined me. They were unjust to me. That is what Mao Sampa has been saying back then. And he accuses Edgar Lungu to have not followed the law back then. What is my comment? Truly, I will tell you, I was there. I was in the midst of all those things that were going on. I followed the events as they unfolded. Truly, there was, a, there was a faction, the Edgar Lungu faction beat the other guys. There was a Mingalato that was played. Because these days we are using this new word of Mingalato. Meaning, you know, uh, a, 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 a trickery ways, you know, tricky ways that were done to achieve a purpose. Basically, tricky ways in Mingalato, tricky ways trick political ways which are engaged to achieve something. And I will tell you that, yes, I was there. And indeed, Imingalato were involved. Tricks were done for Edgar Lungu to emerge as president. The constitution of the PF was not followed word for word, no. 
They, it was not followed word for word. This is the truth. This is the truth. Whether Mao Sampa had, had a chance of becoming president or not, that is another issue. That is another issue. But truth be told, Imingalato was used for Ed Galungu to become president back then. Now, what about this time? Mao Sampa today is saying, I'm president. Mao Sampa is saying, today I'm president. But we all know, all of us, we know that here also Mao Sampa has used Imingalato. He has used, you know, the tricks to become president. He has used tricks to become president. Now, at this point, I'm not going to discuss back then. I'm not going to go back. Suffice to say that tricks were used during the time of uh, electing by Edgar Lungu. They were used. And this time around, Mao Sampa also, there are tricks which have been used for Mao Sampa to emerge as president. Now, what is the difference between the, uh, the, the, the Edgar Lungu, the Edgar Lungu's Mingalato, and the, uh, the, the, the Mao Sampa Mingalato? The difference which is there is that while Edgar Lungu, they use Mingalato, the people that use Mingalato, the, oper the, the operatives, the operatives were PF bona fide members, were genuine PF bona fide members. Mingalato was used, but the, operat the, the operatives, the people that were part of that Mingalato were genuine genuine PF uh, bona fide members. Whilst for Mao Sampa, Mao Sampa did not have the genuine uh, bona fide PF members. He didn't have them. Even the numbers that he's talking about, you know, whatever, whatever. No, he didn't have those numbers. So that is the difference. That is the difference. UPA, P, Edgar Lungu, Imingalato was used, but who were involved? It was genuine PF members. But when you talk about Mao Sampa, it is not genuine PF members. That is number one point from my point of view. And this is the truth. Mao Sampa cannot challenge me on that. No one can challenge me on that. You can't bring the list of those people and show me. Yeah, I can challenge Mao Sampa to say, bring the list of those people who you brought at Mulungushi if they are bona fide PF members. No, he can't. He can't. Because the PF structures remained. The PF structures remained. For Edgar Lungu, the PF structures were there at Mulungushi. Were there at, at uh, Mulungushi Rock in Kawe. For Mao Sampa, the PF structures remained. Okay? I hope you follow me very well on uh, uh, thus far. Now, so... Let me bring in an analogy now, where now the speaker is coming in and the registrar of society will come in. I will use this analogy. We are saying that Mao Sampa hijacked the leadership of PF using some imposters. Using some imposters. He left the structures. He left the structures. And I want to use an analogy. An analogy that I'm going to use, it's like I have a car. You know, I have a car. This is my car. And this car, I have my white book. Okay? I have my white book. So I have this car. This is my car. And I have my white book. Okay? As the owner of this car. And then, Mao Sampa comes and steals this car and I remain with the white book. So Mao Sampa runs with this car and as he runs with this car, he goes and hires a driver. He has a driver. Follow me very carefully. He has a driver, another driver. Meanwhile, for me, I had a driver. And this driver, because we're talking about parliament, this driver is Brian Mundubile. I have this car and I've given it to a driver. 
This driver, you know, is Brian Mundubile. And we have hired, we have hired this vehicle to parliament. Okay? We have hired this vehicle to parliament. Parliament, which is under the leadership of Vaneli Muti. So this is my car. And I've heard it, I've given it a driver, I've given it a driver, brand Mundubile, brand Mundubile, you know, and we have a contract with the speaker. The speaker, you know, recognizes brand Mundubile to say brand Mundubile is the driver for Chirufa Tayari. And they give, you know, uh, this vehicle is used at parliament because it is hard to parliament and Mundubile is driving it, vroom, 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 like that. Now, Mao Sampa steals this vehicle and he hires his own driver, eh, Chavinga. And he goes to speak and he says, Hello, Tayari has sold me this vehicle. Tayari has sold me this vehicle. So from now onwards, my driver is Chavinga. And the contract should be between Parliament and me. This brand will be fire him. Remove him. Remove him. Put my man. My man now is Chavinga. He's the one that will be driving. The contract should be between me and yourself. And he produces some fake documents. Some fake documents. A letter, whatever, whatever, which is purporting that he's, he owns this vehicle. And yet he has just stolen it. Remember I said Mingalato. He has just stolen it. But he has given it to the speaker. And he's saying, this is my new driver. This is my new driver now. From now onwards, this is my new driver. This is my car. Contract should be between me and, and yourself. And then, coupled with that, me, with the speaker, I used to charge, let's say, my rates were 10, 10 were 100 kwacha. 100 kwacha per trip, 100 kwacha per trip. But Mao Sampa goes there and he says, now my new driver is Chavinga and, he, you know, my rates now, you'll be paying only, only 10 kwacha. Only 10 kwacha. And the speaker is happy, isn't it? The speaker is happy. Ah, so now, Chirufia, who I used to have trouble with, whatever, whatever, he was charging me 100 kwacha. Now, I mean, I've got Chavinga, I've got Mao Sampa, so I only have to pay, you know, 10 kwacha instead of 100 kwacha. The speaker is excited. The speaker is excited. And hires Mao Sampa. Hires Mao Sampa. He signs a contract and allows Chavinga now to start operating. To start operating. Meanwhile, meanwhile, myself, instead of, if at this point, if you ask me, what should be my best action at this point? Me, the owner of this vehicle. What should be my best, my best action? My best action, would it be going to police to report Mao Sampa that he has stolen my vehicle or to go to court to say, no, Mao Sampa should not use my vehicle? I want you to objectively listen to my question and answer it reasonably. At this point in time, Mao steals a vehicle from me and, and takes it elsewhere to say, you know, you can, uh, uh, you can be using this one, has it. What is my best action? Will it be, is it okay for me to go to court or is it, should I go to police? Where should I go? Mao Sampa has stolen a vehicle from me. Immediately, pa, he has stolen a vehicle from me. The moment I know Mao Sampa has stolen a vehicle from me, what do you think is my best action? Is it to go to police? Is it to go to, to, to court and tell the court to say, ah, ah, our court, please, please. Mao Sampa should not use my vehicle. That's my vehicle. Mao Sampa should not use that vehicle. That's my vehicle. Or should I go to police and say, hey, waka popola, follow Mao what is your best what is the best action
So, what is my best action? From my point of view, my best action would be to, to go to, to police. That's my, that, from my point of view, that is my best action, to go to police and report that there is, my vehicle has been stolen by Mao Sampa and is masquerading that it's, it's his vehicle. I, I can see people are saying it's to go to court. When something is stolen from you, where do you go? Do you go to court or you go to police? Police for immediate action. You go to police. If you go to court, if you go to court, you are complicating issues. How are you complicating issues? Because when you go to court, you go and ask for an injunction. An injunction to say, let mouse not use my vehicle. Okay? You go and report to say, let mouse not use my vehicle. Let mouse not use my vehicle. That is what he, uh, PF did. PF went to court and said, let mouse not use our vehicle. That is our vehicle. That is our vehicle. That is what Mao's did. That is what PF did. PF went to court and said, let Mao's not use our vehicle. Let Mao's not use our vehicle. Meanwhile, meanwhile, before that, I hope you'll be able to follow. Before that, Mao's had actually sued me. Had actually sued me. That Tayali is using that vehicle. That vehicle is using. It's not actually his. That vehicle belongs to our father. You get the point? Maos had earlier gone to police, to, to court, and said, Tayali, this vehicle that he claims that this is his vehicle, it actually not, it's actually not his. It belongs to our father. It belongs to our father. It is not his. And myself, I ignore that. And I continue using the vehicle. I continue using the vehicle. But Mao has gone to court and say, that vehicle belongs to our father. What I'm trying to say is that Mao Sampa had sued the PF. Mao Sampa had sued by given Luwinda and the and and Chilangwa, he had sued them that they are not legitimate members of PF. Like in the analogy, that Chilufa Tayali is not the owner of the vehicle. He's not the owner of the vehicle. He has gone to court already. And Mao Sampa come and steals the vehicle. He steals the vehicle, and I go to court to say Mao Sampa has stolen my vehicle. What do you think the court is going to do? What do you think the court is going to do? Because I'm talking about this because, you know, they have been also name calling on the judges. I don't think it's fair that we have been calling judges names. Why? Because of this instance. Mao Sampa had gone earlier and challenged Given Luwinda and uh, Chilangwa that these are not legitimate leaders of PF. He had gone there. These are not legitimate leaders of PF. And then he comes and he steals PF. And these people that he has said, these are not legitimate members of PF, legitimate leaders of PF or owners of PF. These very owners, they are the ones that goes to court and say, Mao Sampa has taken our vehicle. Can you please tell him to bring it back to us? Do you follow that? Do you follow? A number of people might have missed this. A number of people may have missed this. Mao Sampa stolen the vehicle. And me, who was challenged to say, no, it's actually not your vehicle. I am the one that goes to court and say, please, Vakoti, tell Mao to bring back the vehicle. That is the injunction that the PF went and put. That is the injunction that the PF went and put. Mao had an injunction to stop the leadership of PF to say, these are not leaders. These are not leaders. 
Mao Zedong had put that injunction before the vehicle was stolen. But these people, those leaders of PF, continued operating as leaders. They continued operating as leaders. And yet there was an injunction for them not to act as leaders. Then Mao decides to steal the vehicle. When he steals the vehicle, these people who are being challenged as leaders, they go to court and say, ah, uh ah, -uh, please tell Mao to bring the vehicle. And that is when they were given that injunction first. The injunction was to say, okay, you are Mao's. Give them back the party. Give them back the vehicle. Then Mao goes back and said, ah, uh ah, -uh, these people who came to you, actually they are not the owners. These are the court documents. I have challenged them. I have challenged about their ownership. So how can they come here and claim to be the owners? We have a matter that needs to be resolved. And that is how the court, they said, uh-uh, in this case, no. That is how they revoked that, uh, they, they vacated that injunction. I hope you follow. Because judges were called names to be UPND cadres and whatever, whatever. I don't think it is right. Because I, from my point of view, the judges acted according to what was before them. The people that were claiming PF, the PF that the people that were claiming PF were already challenged that they are not leaders of PF. So when Mao Sampa steals the party, they go and file in to say he has stolen the vehicle. Can you can you can he bring up back the vehicle? Then he goes back and says, no, they are not the owners. Actually, I've already taken them to court. What do you expect the court to do? What do you expect the court to do? That is how the court vacated that whatever. So from my point of view, from my point of view, from my point of view, the best action that the PF would have done is to go to the police. Is to go to the police to say, Mao Sampa has stolen the vehicle. Mao Sampa has stolen the vehicle. In other words, they should have re reported Mao as being a fraud at that point. As being a fraud. Because the letterhead that he was using, where did he get the letterhead? Who gave him the letterhead? Who gave him the authority to start signing those things? He was a fraud. He was a fraud. So from my point of view, they should have gone the route of, of taking Mao as somebody that has stolen. Yes, he may have the issues with court and whatever, whatever, but the way he got the vehicle, he stole it. It is like, yes, I've got, I've got, I've got this bottle in my house and you are claiming it, but then you come and break my house to get this. I mean, before the court, you you'll be charged for criminal trespass. You'll be charged for criminal trespass. So, there was, there is Imingalat on both ends. There is Imingalat on both ends. But when you're looking at the courts, when you're looking at the courts, you need to look at facts as they are. There was already an injunction against the, the leadership of PF. The party is stolen, and then, and then, the, the same people that are challenged, they go and say, to, they go and claim the party. How can you claim the party when you are challenged as leaders? How can you go and claim? How? I don't know. It's very difficult for me to explain, but I hope you are following my argument. You were challenged. The leadership of PF was already challenged that you are not leaders for PF. So when Mao Sampa stole the party, how can you go and claim to say it is our party when you are already challenged. This is these are the events as they happened. Mao Sampa challenged the leadership before he challenged it before. Then he comes and he takes over the party. He takes over the party. You go and file an injunction to say Mao Sampa should not masquerade as the president of whatever, whatever. Stop him from masquerading. Meanwhile, Mao is also saying, you are also masquerading. What do you want the court to do? What do you want the court to do? Who should the party give? 
Do you want the do you want the court to give to Maos? Do you want the party to give it to who do you want? That's basically how the court has said, uh-uh. Let's have an inter-party. Let's have an inter-party. Let both sides come and explain. Why are you saying he's not the owner? Why are you saying he's not the owner? Meanwhile, there is also another case which is similar because the Judge Katenekwa issue and the new case is, is basically the same. That is how I see it. And I'm just explaining this for people to understand how come an injunction was given? How come an injunction was vacated? It was vacated on based on that explanation that I've given that there was an injunction before and this injunction this injunction the people that were challenged are the people that saw an avidavid to say ah uh ah -uh, that is our party and the court say ah but you are already challenged so who is who here that is where we are that is where we are and that being the case that being the case the vehicle that i told you Mao Sampa has already taken the vehicle. The vehicle is in the hands of Mao. The court has not ordered that get give back the vehicle to the PF to the Lungu leadership. No, the court didn't order that. The court has just said, "Ah, uh -uh, we don't know who is the owner here now, because you are already challenged. So we don't know who is the owner. We can't get involved." That's what basically the court has said. And the the vehicle is in the hands of Mao Sampa. And since the vehicle is in the hands of Mao Sampa, Mao Sampa has now gone to the court, has gone to the to the to, to, to parliament, and he has hired the vehicle to parliament to Vaneri Muti. And Vaneri Muti, ordinarily, when you hear that no, there is a dispute between two parties concerning these vehicles, concerning this vehicle, one would say, well. I mean, because there is there are these issues, uh, I'm not going to, to engage, okay? I'm not going to engage. But one can also choose to say, uh, since, he, you know, you are offering me better rates than what Tayari was offering. Tayari was offering me 100,000, 100 kwacha. You are offering me 10 kwacha. I will continue until the, the court case is resolved. That is what basically Vaneri Muti has done. Vaneri Muti has decided to work with Maus because Maus is the one who has the vehicle at the moment. And she's basically saying, well, for now I'll work with Maus Sampa until the, the case is resolved. Until the case is resolved. Because it's beneficial to her. It's beneficial to her in the sense that, I mean, Maus Sampa is offering better rates if we put it in another way, politically, Mao Sampa is more user-friendly. He's more user-friendly than, than, than Bran Munduwile. Eh? That new leader of opposition is more user-friendly than Bran Munduwile, who puts the speaker, you know, under difficult situations. So she has chosen, I'm going to work with Mao for now, because Mao Sampa is the one who has the, the vehicle. After all, the court has not ordered to say, bring back the vehicle. The court has not ordered. The court has said, well, let's hear both, both sides. And that at the end of the day, we will decide. And for Vanelli Muti, she wants her business to continue smoothly. So she has decided, okay, Mao Sampa, you still have the vehicle. Okay, fine. I, I'll work with you until it is resolved. That's what basically Neri Muti has done. Can you fault Neri Muti for, for deciding to work with Mao Sampa? It's debatable. It's debatable. And mind you, we're talking about politics, especially when we talk about politics. It's highly debatable. Can you say she has committed uh, an offense? I don't think so. Why? Because this vehicle as it is now, it is under contention. It is under contention, and the one who has it is Mouse. Is the one who has it? Is the one who has it? No, but the letter that Mao Sampa presented is is fraudulent. How can Vaneri Muti tell? How can Vaneri Muti tell? Is Vaneri Muti an investigator? 
Vanari Muti is not an investigator. Vanari Muti is, is she's not there, you know, to start checking. Is this later? No, she that's not a job. That's not a job. Unless, unless, if the, the, the police come up and say, ah, ah, we are actually investigating fraud here. We are investigating fraud. We are investigating fraud. Then the Neri Muti at least would say, well, I have this letter, look at it. Is it fraudulent or not? This is DJ Mutati exclusive. Alright, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you. Peace. I gotta go.